Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today we're going to be talking about NVIDIA's latest 30 series GPUs for laptops. This year, NVIDIA has done quite a few things that are different from what they've been doing over the last few years. Buying a 30 series powered laptop is going to be not as straightforward as things have been in the past. So I actually wanted to make sure that we are providing you with all of the information you need in order to make the right decision. So before we get into all of the details, make sure to hit the subscribe button on our channel and of course hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates from us. Now I know what you may be thinking, you're like, oh god, not another video. But you know, the thing is, this is a very, very important topic to cover because the truth is, you could actually go out and buy a 3070 powered laptop and discover that it actually gets beaten out by a 3060 powered laptop. So, you know, there are reasons and there's a lot of things that have changed at NVIDIA's end, the way they're marketing and labeling the GPUs, uh, even also the hardware itself. A lot has changed that will basically be changing the way you choose a GPU. And unfortunately, most of the onus of knowing what you're buying comes down to you. So, let's begin. First, let's talk about what NVIDIA has actually announced. As of now, there are three GPUs for laptops that are available in the 30 series. You have the 3060, the 3070, and of course, the RTX 3080. These are the three primary GPUs, and that is it. Second, we've got to talk about what, Mac, what is Max-Q and what is Max-P. So, Max-Q was introduced by NVIDIA in 2017 as uh, a sort of way to designate that, you know what, this uh, GPU, sure, maybe slightly underpowered, but also gives you great battery life. So it was NVIDIA's way of sort of balancing the scales when it came to performance and battery life. So in order to balance out that max Q factor, uh, OEM started calling the full-fledged, fully powered laptop GPUs max P. So you had max performance and max Q for quiet, whatever. Max P was never an official NVIDIA term, although we have seen it be used every now and then from OEMs to NVIDIA reps, etc, etc. Now, up until now, Max Q basically meant that you still had the same GPU, except it had a slightly lower TGP, TGP being total graphics power. That is the watts drawn by the GPU in order to deliver the frame rates, not to be confused with TDP, make sure of that. Now, this year, NVIDIA has announced that with the third generation of Max-Q, Max-Q no longer means slightly underpowered in favor of better battery. And NVIDIA no longer mandates that OEMs display the Max-Q branding when they advertise the laptop with the new 30 series GPUs. So what that technically means is you don't know if you're getting a Max-Q or a Max-P type of the GPU. To compound the problem further, while NVIDIA does not ask the OEMs to label the GPUs as Max-Q or Max-P, the other thing that's happened is that NVIDIA will allow OEMs to configure the TGP on these GPUs. That means a 3060 could be configured for as low as 60 watts of power, perhaps going into thin and light laptops, all the way up to about 115 watts. Is that correct? Yes, 60 to 115 the top of the line RTX 3080 can be configured anywhere between 80 to 150 plus watts. So for example, this MSI GS66 Stealth that I have in front of me has an NVIDIA 3080 on board. It's got an NVIDIA RTX 3080 on board, but it's configured to 95 watts. And however, if I was to get, let's say an Alienware Area 51 M R4, whatever the next version of the Area 51 M, if it came with a 3080, chances are it's going to have a 150 plus watt GPU on board. So technically, you've got the same 3080s, but they're going to deliver very, very different levels of performance. Now, NVIDIA has, re has requested or has suggested to OEMs that they display the TGP of these GPUs in the marketing and spec sheet material. However, we've seen in the past that manufacturers have been far more than okay to not disclose even, for example, if a GPU was the Max-Q type. So we don't really trust OEMs to do the right thing and actually disclose the actual TGP of the onboard GPUs in clear terms. So here's how you can figure out whether 
the laptop you're buying has the right kind of TGP for the GPU that's on board. There are two ways to do it. One is, of course, to dig through the spec sheet, through um, the official website specifications. If it's not there, you will need to get your hands on the actual laptop and go into the NVIDIA GeForce control panel. And over there in the settings page, it will actually tell you what is the TGP configured for this GPU. That is literally the only way to be sure. And honestly, for a lot of people who tend to buy laptops online, this is going to create a lot of problems. You will have people who end up buying a laptop thinking, oh, it's a 3080 based machine, so I'm gonna get killer frame rates. Mm -mm, you're not. That was actually my experience with this laptop as well. This GS66 Stealth comes with a 1440p panel, 240Hz refresh rate display, but the frame rates were nowhere in, the, in that range. So we're gonna talk about that in a separate video about this machine and about the 3080, but for now, um, you've basically got this major problem where the only way to actually know what kind of performance you will get out of the GPU is to look out for that TGP number, the total graphics power in watts. Very, very critical. Ask for it. If you're buying it online, put it on Amazon, put it on Flipkart, wherever you're buying it from, ask that question. If you're reading a review, leave that question in the comments if the reviewer has not addressed it. We are gonna try our best to make sure that we're consistently recording the TGPs of every gaming laptop we review, not just with 30 series, but even the previous ones. We're gonna go dig into our data and find that out and make sure that we report it and try and also make sure that the comparisons we do are comparable. So we're not gonna do a comparison between two 3080 laptops when one has a TGP of 80 and the other has a TGP of 160. I'm gonna try and not do that, but we might still show you what kind of difference you get if that is the case. With that out of the way, what is Max-Q now? Max-Q still is existent. Max-Q is now, unf well, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, but Max-Q is now a combination of various technologies that are designed to enhance the quieter side of operations of a gaming laptop. So you have a bunch of different modes that have come in. There's a Whisper Mode 2.0. So Whisper Mode 2.0, basically what it does is it measures the acoustics of your laptop and then once enabled, will maintain that acoustic level, prioritize that acoustic level and then change the CPU, GPU power draw accordingly. There's also other things like Dynamic Boost 2.0, which is essentially the shifting of power between the CPU and GPU dynamically to deliver the maximum possible frame rates. Um, in addition to that, we also have a few other things such as resizable bar, which allows the CPU to access the entire VRAM on the GPU itself. That's a feature we saw on AMD's uh, Ryzen systems recently with the 5000 series. So you've of course also got improvements to DLSS, improvements to Optimus, etc. So there is where we stand. Um, the 30 series for laptops is going to be definitely confusing to buy. A 3060 is not just a 3060, a 3070 is just not a 3070 and there is no straight comparison between a 3060 and a 3070 without knowing what kind of wattage they're going to draw. The other very, very notable thing with the new series of GPUs is the fact that on the hardware, actually the physical die side of things, you have far less CUDA cores on the laptop side than in comparison to the desktop side. If you consider the 10 series or even the 20 series of GPUs, that was not the case. If the desktop GPU had 2,900 CUDA cores, the laptop variant would also have 2,900 CUDA cores. On the laptop side, that has changed. The laptop GPUs have lesser CUDA cores than the desktop counterpart. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because you have to understand, laptop GPUs and OEMs all have to work within the laws of physics, which is heat and power. A desktop GPU can draw as much as 300, 350 watts of power in the 30 series. You can't have a laptop drawing that much power and still be like this thin. You can't have that, right? Additionally, you also cannot solve for 300 watts of heat dissipation in a machine like this. So there are a lot of these considerations that have to be made. And now given that the 30 series uh, improves its manufacturing process to eight nanometer, you've got more powerful uh, cores on board. So a slight reduction is probably, well, this is a guess, educated guess, 
The reduction in cores is probably the only way for Nvidia to make these GPUs actually laptop viable because if they still had that many CUDA cores, I think we would be seeing some very serious thermal problems on them. So that's a quick um, look at basically the problems you might potentially face picking up a 30 series laptops. These are the things that you should absolutely keep in mind. And hopefully you guys have a good purchasing experience moving forward. As for me, I'm going to see you in the next one. But before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button on our channel and also the bell icon so that you don't miss all of our coverage of this NVIDIA 3080 powered MSI GS66 Stealth. So stay tuned.